come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Welcome, everybody. Once again, wherever you are, you're most welcome to join us as we continue to celebrate online Mass, and we'll continue for some time yet, I'm sure. But at least we can all gather together in one way or another and celebrate the great prayer of the Mass. And we have some beautiful words from St. Paul today. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving. So that's what we do. We pray together. And we're always aware as we come together, our need to pray, our need for God's forgiveness, our need for his help. So we call upon him as we begin our Mass. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So together we give glory to God. Glory to God, God in the highest, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing to my friend the song of his love for his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted choice vines in it. In the middle he built a tower, he dug a press there too. He expected it to yield grapes, but sour grapes were all that it gave. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, I ask you to judge between my vineyard and me. What could I have done for my vineyard that I have not done? I expected it to yield grapes. Why did it yield sour grapes instead? Very well, I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge for it to be grazed on, and knock down its walls for it to be trampled on. I will lay it waste, unpruned, undug, overgrown by the briar and the thorn. I will command the clouds to rain no rain on it. Yes, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah that chosen plant. He expected justice, but found bloodshed. Integrity, but only a cry of distress. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. It stretched out its branches to the sea. To the great rivers, it stretched out its shoots. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. 
and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. There is no need to worry, but if there is anything you need, pray for it, asking God for it with prayer and thanksgiving. And that peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, fill your minds with everything that is true, everything that is noble, everything that is good and pure, everything that we love and honour, and everything that can be thought virtuous or worthy of praise. Keep doing all the things you have learnt from me, and have been taught by me, and have heard or seen that I do. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learnt from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a man, a landowner, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it round, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went abroad. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his servants thrashed one, killed another, and stoned a third. Next, he sent some more servants, this time a larger number, and they dealt with them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir, come on, let us kill him and take over his inheritance. So they seized him, and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They answered, he will bring those wretches to a wretched end and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will deliver the produce to him when the season arrives. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures it was the stone rejected by the builders that became the keystone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you then that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have a very powerful message from Jesus today in that parable. And obviously, with, when Jesus tells a parable, there are different layers of meaning. And the purpose of him using parables is that it means something to the people that he's telling it to at the time, and it continues to have a meaning and a relevance for us now and throughout the history of the world. So the obvious meaning back then it was those chief priests and scribes and elders that he's speaking to. You know, they're the ones, as it says in the first reading, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. They're the privileged ones who have been chosen by God, but they've lost sight of what it means to be his people. And they have seized power for themselves. And of course, what Jesus is trying to get at is that those tenants are them, and they are trying to throw God out of their vineyard by rejecting Jesus himself, the Son. But that message still continues for us throughout history, and it's particularly important for us today, in the, the, the times through which we're living, which are times that most people in the world have lived through at some point, these extraordinary times. But this sense of God's creation, the world that he has created for us is his vineyard and we are called 
to go out and work in his vineyard and produce the fruit that is then owed back to him. But where we go wrong as human beings, as a human race, is when we try and ignore him, throw him out of his own vineyard and keep all that uh, produce, that vintage for ourselves. We, th we see that throughout history where people, whenever they try and expel God from society, bad things happen. And don't get me wrong, people use God and religion for bad things too. It's not as if uh, we're living in some perfect world when um, the faith is strong. It's the, still the human weaknesses there that can lose sight of what's important. It's a bad interpretation of what it means to work in God's vineyard. And that's not to say that people who don't believe in God are not trying to do good things and make the world a better place. Even in the parable, those tenants have produced fruits that needs to be collected. They've produced the wine. They've carefully produced. I was talking to a friend the other day about this gospel, and he reminded me about some of those vineyards in, in Italy or France, wherever, and, and even in Australia and South Africa, where generations of families have worked on those vineyards to the point that apparently some of those people uh, can taste uh, a glass of wine from their, their vintage that year and they'll know which field that's come from, which vine that particular vintage has come from, that bottle, yeah, that comes from over there. They care about, they know their grapes and their land so well that's what's important to them, that they, they know where the wine has come from. And that's not to say that those tenants in the parable didn't do that either. It shows how much care has to go on. And what we're called to do as well, that we have to know the people with whom we're working, the places where we're working so well. And that only comes about from caring for those people and for the situations in which we are living. But of course, when we don't realize that we are loved by God, where we're loved by a higher being, that there's no one else to answer to, that's when we start to lose our way as human beings in society. Because we've seen throughout history where political systems have started off with good intentions, but that human greed, that desire for power, ends up meaning that people are exploited and that we don't give our due to the people that we're supposed to give it to. It becomes selfish, self-enclosed. Human beings become commodities to be used and the, the love disappears. It ends up being temporary. And even in the church itself, the church is a divine institution and we've seen how in times of um, f when it's flourished, it become, can become complacent and the leaders through their own human weakness can jostle for power and position and lose sight again of what, where God is in all that. And it's one of those little miracles I always say, or a not so little miracle, that the church is still going 2,000 years later in spite of all that human weakness. It's one of those things to show that it's divine. But my points, my overall point is that when we lose sight of God in our lives, in our society, it will all end up going wrong. So what this time that we're living through is possibly calling us as a world to look at is you know, do we need to bring God back into our society? We look at the creation he's given us. People are starting to open their eyes to see how we've not been good stewards of our creation. But it's all very well saying we need to look after creation, but we need to do it for a good reason that will sustain us. And that reason is that God has asked us to do it. And in our society in general, the dignity of every human being comes from the fact that we are all created equal by God 
in his eyes and loved into being by him and then sustained and loved by him throughout our lives. That's where our equal human dignity comes from. So the parable of the vineyard and the tenants in the vineyard is saying to us, don't try and get rid of God because you're just going to replace him with your own greed, your own needs and wants. When we remember God in our society, that's when we truly find love and when we produce good fruit. So now together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all all things things visible and and invisible. invisible. I believe believe in one Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, the only only begotten begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God God from God, light light from light, light, true God from true God, God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by by the Holy Holy Spirit was was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became became man. man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we turn to God with our prayers of intercession. Let's give thanks to God for the earth and all the wonders in it as we pray together. We pray for world leaders that they may do all that they can to protect the earth so that all people now and in the future can enjoy the wonders of God's creation. Lord and your master, hear our prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters around the world that they may have the chance to enjoy God's creation and to grow and produce the food that they need to live. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish family and friends, that we may treat the earth and all that is in it with respect, never taking more than we need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hail Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. We pray for those commended to us. In particular, we remember, lately dead, Terry Corrigan, Pat Ridings, Mark Cunningham, John Parr, Neville Woodcock, Pat Meehan, Tommy McDonough, Veronica Kerr, Jim Curley, Mary Mellor. Anniversaries, John Moynihan, Teresa Murphy, Kathleen White, Anne Keeher. Sick, Lily, Bridget Spillane, Eileen O'Malley, Con McGuinness, Ellen Queenan, Anne Rowley, Anna Braganza, Jim Leaning, Catherine Hampson, Mary Shura, Gerald Shura, Claire Neary, Sadie Deegan, Mike O'Hare, Annie Lavin, Pat Coffey, Joe Burke, Michael Martin, Marion Kerrigan, Michael Clancy, Maureen Brennan, Tommy Joyce, Tommy Sherlock, Maliki Greeny and family, Joan Porter, John Jean and Patrick, Anne Bell, Ruth Bell, Rachel Dell, Mary Wakelin, Roger Grassing, Matty Brigham, Betty Price, Mary Burns, Ben Thickbroom, Martin Slayman, Jerry Dillon, Catherine Young, Loretta Girolami, Catherine Leach, Wendy Blinko, Jim Love, Josie Sweeney, Stuart, Smith, Amy Lloyd. All those affected by the coronavirus. Special intentions too for the Bell family, and for Mark and Carmen as they begin seminary at Valladolid, and a birthday remembrance for Betty. Kalini. 
we make all our prayers together through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, that through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which we are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin. So that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until, until you come, come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Catherine of Siena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, in the, the unity, unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Sweet heart of Jesus, fount of love and mercy, today we come thy blessings to implore. Oh, touch our hearts, so cold and so ungrateful, and make them, Lord, thine own forevermore. Sweet heart of Jesus, we of Jesus, make us know and love Thee, unfold to us the treasures of Thy grace, that so our hearts from things of earth uplifted may longer long to gaze upon Thy face. Sweet heart of Jesus. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. I'd just like to uh, mention that our bishop is conducting a holy hour uh, this afternoon, Sunday, with the theme Hope in Difficult Times. That's at 3 p.m. and can be accessed online through churchservices.tv stroke Salford Cathedral. Also, we've completed our first Holy Communion program now. That went uh, here at St. Catherine's. That went very well. I want to record my thanks to the school staff who were particularly helpful and supportive. This afternoon, uh, St. Ambrose children make their first Holy Communion. So please remember them in your prayers. And we'll be starting our new First Holy Communion program shortly um, with a special Mass on Saturday the 7th of November. Masses, actually. 
and um, all children in our schools will receive an application form, a registration form. Uh, but if your children go to s s other schools, please uh, see myself or Father Michael, get in touch, and we can give you a registration form and a, a list of the dates and what's happening. So thank you all for sharing in this celebration of Mass with myself and Father Michael. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.